All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at a split study based on the new 7702 rules, and we're going to give everyone exactly what they want to see. We're not gonna look at a policy where we fund it for five years, 10 years. We're gonna look at a policy where we pay into it forever. We are going to attach a term rider to both a 1090 split and also a 2575 split. We're gonna fund it for seven years. I'm sorry, we're gonna max fund it for seven years up to the seven pay limit, about $100,000 per year. And then after that, we're gonna drop the term rider and pay in just $25,000 per year indefinitely, up until just about age 100. And we're going to look at the dividend values because based on the new 7702 rules, we have a higher surplus crediting rate, a higher dividend, which since dividends are more favorable on base premium dollars, that should result in greater long-term value, especially if we keep on pumping into it, pumping money into it. But is that the case? So we're going to look at the dividend values and then also the guaranteed value so we can just have full transparency to see what type of design I should go with if I am very, very interested in the long-term cash value, but also I value my money all the way through, so I wanna see the short term as well. So here we go. We are going to look at a product that is purely designed for, str for strong long-term performance in L99 paid up at age 99, but for the split study. So we've got 100,000 per year going in. And what that means with a 1090 design, we're going to have a $10,000 base premium. It's actually a little bit less than that. The base premium is about $9,000. We have a term rider attached as well. So what that means is we have a close, just about a net of $10,000 per year. Whereas with the 2575, we've got a term rider that literally costs a couple hundred bucks we cut it off after year seven and then fund just the base premium thereafter, which is a very, very common strategy we see when it comes to a 2575, a 4060, whatever type of design it is. But what we want to do here to be very, very specific is the funding is going to be $100,000 per year for seven years. And then after that, it'll be 25K per year for the rest of my life. And this is on a 40 year old individual to start. So what that means is with a 1090 split, beginning year eight, he's still paying the base premium of about $9,000 and change and everything else is going into PUAs. And the policy does not mech based on the guaranteed values, dividend values, nothing like that. This way I can see the numbers and make an informed decision to know what design will benefit me from a minimum premium, and maximum cash value standpoint. This way, if your value is maximized, you can use it for whatever you want or need to over the years, because you've got the most money to do so. So let's get on into it. What we will begin with, dividend values. So on the left, we've got a lot going on here. I'm gonna walk through this very slowly. So this is all based on the new products with the 7702 change. Dividend values, L99. Base premium, and this includes the term rider as well, about $10,000. Again, it's a little bit less than this. PUA rider, $90,000. Annual outlay represents his total out-of-pocket year over year. First year cash value, about 83% in this example. The break-even point is year six. Normally, this would be year five with this type of product. I'm sorry, with this company and the product we often use, but we wanted to maximize the long-term internal rate of return as much as possible. Long-term cash value, long-term death benefit, and this one gave a little bit more long-term than the guy that breaks even year five. Not a big difference though. So positive year five, I mean, I'm sorry, year six. What do I see in the funding? 100K per year. After seven years, my base premium remains constant at $10,000 per year. We're going to assume we keep on paying it year in and year out, but what do you see here? So through the seventh year, your PUA payment was $90,000, and when we drop the total payment to 25K per year, 15,000 per year is allocated toward paid up additions. So we've got our cash value and death benefit growth over time. We did use a blended PUA rider, a one-year term. 
which is why you see it level for the first seven years. That's a good indicator to know if you have a one-year term attached. And then we chopped it off after year seven. Compared to the guy on the right, the 25-75 split, dividend values. So $25,000 base premium, $75,000 PUA, net out of pocket $100,000. Cash value, $69,000 right off the bat, almost 70%. Now, before the 7702 change, that would be a bit higher. It'd be closer to $75,000. We've got the higher PUA load now, now that exists with this company and product. But there's your death benefit, and there's your immediate impact. About $14,000, a $14,000 difference in cash value. Year two, same payment goes in. You've got almost a $28,000 difference in cash value. Here's the main reason why. This is a traditional whole life insurance product. With traditional policies, what happens in the first and second year in respect to base premium dollars? If you've seen any of our policy design videos, base premium dollars do not show up in cash value in the first and second year. That's why we see this 1090 design really pull ahead in the first and second year. So if I'm running a race, I'm out of the gates much quicker like with this guy, and I have to make up for lost time now. This one's compounding quicker as well. So as I look at things over here, what happens each year? So we're gonna fund the exact same pattern, 100K for seven years. There you go. What do you notice? Almost $50,000 less in cash value than that guy. Now, time continues to pass. What happens? We start, start to see the 2570 start, 2575 start to pick up the pace, but it's very slow. It's slowly tracking down the 1090. And by the way, if you raise that base premium and make it a 3070 or a 4060 with the new 7702 laws, it makes things even worse, meaning it's further behind. So, what happens? Let's look 50 years down the road. He's pushing 90 years old. Let's go all the way down, actually, to about 100 years old. If we look at age 90, in the 1090, about 8.2 million in cash value. In the 2575, What do we notice here at age 90? 8.15 million. What's the difference in cash value? We're almost back to where we were in the second year. It's about 25, 26, 000, uh, $25,000 to $26,000 difference. The death benefit is actually a little bit higher at this point in time with the 2570, which is somewhat common, but still not much of a difference in the cash value. But here's the thing. All the way through, we had between 20 and call it a little over $50,000 or less in this guy. Especially in the early years, what is that? We've got the word opportunity cost. Huge difference there. So if all things are equal at the end of the road, why would I not take the example or the policy with the same company and product that has more money all the way through? Like, why would I not do it? Makes more sense. I've got more value as a consumer. I have less money as an agent from a compensation standpoint, which is good to know for full transparency. So those are the dividend values. That is what is not guaranteed. Let's take a look at the guarantees. So everything's identical here, pulled directly from the illustration software, which we always do. 1090 on the left. All the same, base premium, PUA allocation, first year cash values are identical because with this company, no dividends are paid in the first year, expenses are identical, so there's no difference. But what do you notice here? Break even point, 7702 update. This is where it hurts. Used to be between years five and eight, depending on how long you're funding. Now it's year 10, guarantees we're looking at here compared to the 2575. All the way at the bottom of the screen, year 14 is your break-even point. I'm gonna scroll up, but as I do that, 
Look at that difference in cash value. $75,000 less with the higher base premium design compared to the 1090 design. Which one do I like more? Uh, yeah, the lower premium because it's what's guaranteed. Do I want what's guaranteed or do I want to take a policy with a higher base premium for the hope that right now is non-existent, but for the small hope that I might have more money long term? Like, I wouldn't. I'd go with what is true, what is proven, what's guaranteed with that minimum premium. And this is regardless if I'm in the industry, regardless if you work with us or not, if you've spoken with any of our agents and it was a competitive case, like you know how we treat that. We provide information. We love it if you decide to work with us, but at the same time, c competitors, if they're doing the same thing, they're doing the right thing, they might even work with us in our coaching and training business. So we're not gonna try and cut, them, cut their legs out from underneath them, that'd be wrong. Let's go all the way down, just like we did in the last example. And what do you notice here? Look at this. It's not a $20,000 difference anymore. So based on the non-guarantees, the $25,75 produced between twenty dollars and $50,000 less all the way through. Based on the guarantees, by the time we're kicking the bucket, it's four dollars to $500,000 less in cash value. If we look at the death benefit, that's significant as well. So this is the kind of stuff I want to be aware of upfront as a consumer. Clear comparisons, same term riders, everything used to truly maximize both examples. So if you have questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. I do hope this helps and we will talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.